Hello dear students, in this lesson we are going to learn what lambda expressions and method references are. Today we are going to have really a lot of practice. After this lesson you will be able to write lambda functions like a pro. I will explain you what functional interfaces are and we will learn the difference between regular and functional interfaces. By the end of the lesson you will know how to create your own functional interfaces. We are going to learn what lambda function is and what method reference is. I prepared special examples that will help you to grasp the knowledge faster. I am going to show you how you can write lambda functions and how you can use method references. Let's start. And today the best way to learn the topic is start from examples. That's why I suggest switching to the Eclipse and start our lesson. To understand how to use lambda functions and method references we have to understand first what functional interface is. As we briefly discussed in previous lesson, functional interface is an interface that has single abstract method declared in it. Take a look at this example. This interface is called distance calculator. It is declared to have a hierarchy of types that can calculate distance of delivery of customer's order in miles. Calculator can calculate the shortest path, the most optimal route, route for interstate delivery, distance from the closest store or from the specific store and lots more. All this might be implemented in calculate distance method in other types that will implement distance calculator. This method also takes two objects of city type that store inside coordinates. We have city type declared here. This is a type created just for our example. The state of the city can be described with the help of the coordinates longitude and latitude. And we have getters and setters here. Now you have the context of real life business case. I believe that understanding of real life example will help you to grasp new knowledge faster. That is great. You can see new annotation here. Functional interface. What is it for? First of all, this is a great sign to notify clients of your code that originally this interface is created to be a target type for lambda functions and method references. And the second reason to use this annotation is that in case somebody would try to add additional abstract method, there will be a compilation error. Let me uncomment this line of code that contains declaration of additional method. And here you can see we have compilation error now. That's why functional interface annotation helps us to prevent cases when someone wants to add additional behavior to the type that we already used in other parts of the program as a type for lambda function. Hope it is clear what function interface is. Let me comment this method again to proceed. Pay attention to the fact that functional interface can contain as much default methods as possible and as much static methods as possible. This doesn't violate the rule for functional interface. That's it regarding functional interface. That was easy. Agree? Let me congratulate you. Now you know how to create your own custom functional interface. And now when you know what functional interface is, let's learn what lambda expressions are. Let me open the next example that I have prepared before this lesson. I have few more classes grouped here in one file, just for the sake of example, to not switch tabs between different files. Imagine that we have class with the name order management. And this class requires an instance of distance calculator type to perform all operations related to order management. We can pass instance of distance calculator type either with the help of constructor or with the help of the setter here. That means you need to create an object of type distance calculator in your program. But you know that you can't create objects on the basis of interface, right? That's why you declare a concrete class, let's say default distance calculator and implement distance calculator interface here. Now, when we create object of type order management, we create object of type distance calculator. But what to do in case we need to change distance calculator to take into account specifics of interstate delivery? In this case, we have to create another concrete class. And we need this just to override calculate distance method only once. Is it worth it? We think that this doesn't worth of our efforts and we decide to declare anonymous class and create an instance of anonymous class. This time we take into account logic for interstate distance calculation. Ok, but can you see how much lines of code it takes? It is super weird that we have to declare a concrete class just to give implementation of one single method. 
we can create dozens of concrete classes to implement dozens of functions. But do we need to overwhelm our application with additional classes if we just need one function in one single place? No. That's where lambda function is going to help us. But what is lambda function? It is also called anonymous function. It doesn't have any name. Usually anonymous functions are passed to higher order functions. Also, in case the function is only used once or limited number of times, it will be easier to use lambda expression rather than declaring concrete class. Indeed, to create an object of type distance calculator we have to just implement one method. Take a look here. I declare new variable of distance calculator type to describe new logic for calculate distance method. And here you can see the lambda expression. Here it is. Lambda function, anonymous function. We can call this in different ways by using different names. Let me explain you the syntax. Here you can see parentheses that we usually use for method invocation or to pass arguments. You can see that I pass ct1 and ct2 arguments. Where I took this? I didn't create any objects. This is just local method variables, similar to ones we use in method declaration. Using these variables, I can get access to objects that my function should work with inside the method body. I will show you that in a second. Why I don't write types of these local variables? Because compiler knows that I want to give implementation of the method from distance calculator type. And the first argument in this method has type city. The same as the second argument. That's why compiler knows that these local variables should be of type city. But in case I will add types here, there is no harm in this. Just like this. In case if distance calculator wouldn't declare any method parameters in calculate distance method, in that case we would skip method arguments here and would leave just blank parentheses. Like this. Here is lambda and here goes returned value. Here is some dummy calculation, for example I perform subtraction of longitude of ct1 and ct2. That doesn't give us the true distance between cities, but makes you understand that you can perform any calculations here. And the result of this calculation is returned from the method. We are skipping return keyword here, because compiler knows that I wanna give implementation of the abstract method of distance calculator type, and compiler knows that this method should return value. Technically, creation of object of anonymous class and this is the same. Because calculate distance implementation is the same as here. The next point you have to know about our syntax. In case our anonymous function consists of more than one line, then we need to use braces. And here you can see an example. Also, in this case, we have to write return keyword. I believe you see that in this case, visually, this lambda function is closer to the method we have here in anonymous class. We are missing only return type value, method name, type of local variables and access modifier. So in case I write here public double calculate distance, and in case I would add types to local variables, does it make more sense like this? But for lambda expression we don't need to specify access modifier, it is already accessed here. Let me remove it. Also, we don't have to specify return type, because our Java compiler can understand that we are going to implement method from distance calculator functional interface, and the method inside this interface has double return type. Can you understand now why it is important that functional interface has only one abstract method? Because in case functional interface has more than one method, then it is not clear what method I try to implement with the help of anonymous function. Is that clear? So I can remove return type. And also I can remove method name, because it is clear what method I want to implement, and I don't need any other identifier to access this function. And I believe you already understood why I can remove also types of my local variables, because compiler knows that these variables will be of type city according to the interface. Here you can see that I can call calculate distance method on my reference here. And I believe you already understood that these lines of code will be executed. Let me prove you this. I run the program and here you can see console output from the lambda function. And when I need implementation of distance calculator interface and I need it only one time only, 
it is easier for me to create lambda function rather than declare a concrete class and create an instance of a concrete class. For example, here in the set method I can pass any function I need and that will be enough for order management. Because order management is interested not in the fact of getting object of type discount calculator. Order management is interested in getting behavior to calculate distance. And I give the specific definition of behavior with the help of lambda function. Usually it is not instantly clear for my students where we will get arguments for the lambda function. I want you to understand that lambda function it is not a method invocation with arguments. It is just a definition of the method with parameters, similar to the thing we do when we implement any interface in concrete class. So the city objects will be passed here to this function wherever it will be needed according to the logic described in the order management. Sometimes we only know that some type, like order management, just needs logic to calculate distance between two cities. And sometimes we really don't care where order management will get those cities. Probably they will be passed to other methods of order management or will be present in order details, but we let order management object decide when to call our function and we let order management bother about what cities to pass there. Does it make sense? Hope you understood what lambda function is. Now let me explain you what a method reference is. Imagine that you already have methods that do exactly the same what you want. Probably it is from some external library, or probably it is just from another class. Then why do we need to declare a concrete class to overwrite method or create lambda function? Why don't we just tell to order management object to use the method that already exists in all cases when order management needs to calculate distance? We can do so. And for this we have to use method references. Let me show you the next example. Here is the example of some third party class. Imagine that it is called Google Distance Calculator. And it has method for distance calculation. It is called Get Distance Between Cities. You can see that we have static and non-static method. That is for the sake of example to cover few cases. Please pay attention to the fact that type of returned value and type of method parameters is the same as we have in distance calculator interface. This is important. And now when I need to set new distance calculator into my order management object, I just pass the reference to this method. Let me explain you the syntax here. Here is the name of our class that contains the method that we need, followed by double colon. This is the syntax of method reference. I'm referencing to the get distance between cities static method in Google Distance Calculator class. Does it make sense? And again, this is not method invocation. That's why I don't pass any method arguments here. Order management just needs something that can take two cities and will return double value. That's all what order management object expects from distance calculator type. And this method from Google Distance Calculator do the exact things that order management wants. That's why there is no compilation error here. Pay attention that I use class name to make a reference to static method. In case I want to make a reference to non-static method, I have to create object. And here you can see that I created object. Now I can use variable of my object to make a reference to the non-static method. Does it make sense? Hope now it is clear how method references work. We learned a lot today. Let's recap what we have learned today. Today we learned what functional interface is and we even created a custom functional interface. Now you know what lambda function is and how to write your own lambda expression. After that we learned what method reference is. On real example we learned how to apply your knowledge. That's it for this lesson. Thank you for your attention. See you in the next lesson.